welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And every Wednesday, we have either Harley Schlanger, one of our main guests in the uh, Nutramedical Report, every Wednesday, hour one, or one of the amazing other guests from the LaRouche Foundation. We have, of course, the LaRouchePAC.com main website with audio video clips and articles and the EIR Executive Intelligence Review. Uh, I think that uh, Lyndon LaRouche and his organization has done an amazing job of, I call level headed, people centered, and humanity centered. Uh, for what I call a, a a plan for the third millennium attitude toward humanity rather than marching as we see with the globalists toward war, toward discourses of conflict, toward financial chaos and economic collapse. Uh, they're basically one of the few lights in the darkness and uh, uh, they'll tell it straight just to even quoting people like uh, we're going to mention in this article here, uh, General Ivashov and his comments. So let's start with that. That's, Pretty shocking, but it's you know the Russians are not known to to mince their words, are they? Well, they're being very direct because they're afraid that people are missing what's going on. And I, I'll tell you, Doctor Deagle, in the United States, people have no idea what our <laughs> government is doing. It's bad enough that from the Libyan operation forward, we've been in an open alliance with al-Qaeda terrorists. That President right. Obama has been openly supporting al-Qaeda terrorists in Libya, in Syria. Maybe he's blowing them up in Yemen, but I think he's actually blowing up wedding yeah. parties more often in Yemen. But now we're openly in an alliance. Well, these are the same parties. terrorists that uh, plan to disrupt the Sochi Olympics as promised by King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia. I mean, what could be worse? Well, and so far the Russians have done a, a very good job of, of protecting those Olympics, and there has been some help from the U.S. military for that. But at the same time, the United States is conspiring with Nazi parties in Ukraine. Now, when I'm saying that, I'm not just saying they're like Hitler or they have okay. some parallels to the Nazis. They carry swastikas when they march. And John wow. Kerry told the Munich Security Conference two weeks ago, the op said to the opposition, President Obama and the American people are with you, referring to the opposition, <laughs> which has okay. led... Well, let me How let me can, finish the point here. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is, it's even worse than that. Then yeah. Victoria Newland, the Under Secretary of State, who used to right. be Dick Cheney's foreign policy advisor, she's oh, married God. to neocon Robert Kagan. She was the one who was defending Susan Rice on the lies the U.S. then uh, ambassador to the U.N. was telling about the Libya Benghazi assault. Then she got moved to the Europe desk. And she was caught on uh, a phone call to the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine discussing who should be in the next government of Ukraine. And she said, this one should be, this other guy's not experienced enough, he shouldn't be. And they agreed on that. Now, at the end, because they were talking about why the EU has not been helpful, she said, F you, the EU. And that right. got major coverage in Europe, and everyone in Europe was outraged. But why was no one in the United States outraged that the president's top operatives are talking about putting Nazi affiliates into power in Ukraine in the name of democracy? Now then, to make things worse, the U.S. House of Representatives had a bill or a resolution, I think it was number 447, that passed two days ago, 383 to 2, calling for full U.S. support for the opposition. And our organizers went around to these congressmen on their way out and said, do you know who's in the opposition? Do you know there are Hitler lovers and Hitler admirers, people who carry pictures of Hitler in their pockets when they demonstrate? And the congressman said, oh, no, I didn't know that. Well, these that's are, how are dysfunctional. That's dangerous. Well, they're either are lying... They're either lying or they're dysfunctional. Well, either way, they're incompetent. They should be removed from office. Because when you have congressmen that can vote to put in liberty, and these are, as you say, and I remember from talking to people that were in the Nazi death camps and survived, that the worst of the death camp supervisors were the Ukrainian Nazi sympathizers. Yeah, they were and the most the, vicious, the, nasty pieces of human garbage that ever walked the face of the earth. I mean, the, the Ukrainian Nazi Nazis. Even the Nazis disliked them. This guy, right. Bandera, 
who became a, a part of the Hitler apparatus once the Nazis marched into Ukraine, was later put in jail by the Nazis, and then he was let out when the Russian offensive started, and his Ukrainian grouping of uh, several thousand, I think it was seven or eight thousand people, carried out murders of, it's documented, at least 70,000 Jews and Russians. And we went to the Jewish members of Congress. This guy, Bandera, by the way, is still the the uh, uh, honored leader. He's dead. He was assassinated by the KGB in 1959. But he's still the accepted, uh, he's like the George Washington of the Ukrainian Nazi movement called right. the Svoboda Party. And so we went to these Jewish congressmen and said, do you know you're supporting people who carry around pictures of a man who ran the SS units in Ukraine for the Nazis? <clears throat> now, some of them said, gee, I didn't know that. A congressman from Brooklyn came out today and said it was a mistake that he voted that way and he apologized. But I'll tell you, the, now, it's bad enough that this is happening, but the way the Russians view it, Remember, the Russians lost 20 to 30 million people in World War II. And the Russians are now seeing the British and the Americans supporting Nazis in Ukraine, the same Nazis who killed Russians in World War II. And so what Putin said is that if this doesn't stop, this intrusion into Ukraine by the West, the putting of ballistic missile defense systems surrounding Russia, if this doesn't stop, there will be an abrupt change in our relations. And that's where this statement from General Ivashov is so important. Leonid Ivashov, who's the former head of foreign relations of the Russian Ministry of Defense, and he's the president of one of the more prestigious academies in the Russian universities, said that apparently officials of the European Union and the U.S. Secretary of State have dedicated themselves and continue to do so to deeply and thoroughly studying the doctrine of Dr. Goebbels, Hitler's propaganda minister. He said they present everything backwards from reality. And he said that's what Nazi propaganda did. They accuse the party that is defending itself of aggression. And he said, what we're seeing in Ukraine and in Syria is a Western project, a new kind of war. In both places, you see a clear anti-Russian approach. And then he said, and this is a relevant point, I assume that the foreign ministry of Russia understands that we are at war. Now, wow. he said, Kerry and Obama are encouraging in Kiev what they repress in their own country. And so this is where you see the danger that Lyndon LaRouche has been warning about. We have a, a second statement that I sent you that I believe you're going to put up on your uh, uh, website called LaRouche, Get Obama Out to Stop the Countdown to Thermonuclear War. It's already posted, uh, and, and it's an audio that, that this, you know, these, these warnings have been increasing over the years that we've had uh, you on a program on Wednesdays. And I can tell you, I really believe I can almost smell the sulfur smell of the dragon on our necks. I can almost feel the war drums beating. I can hear the echoes of 1914 with the First World War. And the within seven months, by the way, of inauguration of the Fed Reserve, which has occurred on Christmas Eve before the uh, end of, of 1913. So what I'm seeing is a situation where we're literally, get, if we continue on this march, we're going to have a world war very shortly, and it'll start off probably in the Middle East or in Eastern Europe, like in Ukraine, because they're on the verge of civil war. The, we're not talking about average weapons of a rising population kind of resisting their main government. By the way, they were they were properly elected, monitored by the United Nations. What we have is a regime change, and they're so overt now. Obama and the West, they don't apologize for any of their behavior. They just say, "Try to stop us," just the way. The Republicans are not willing to do an impeachment of, of Obama because they've been uh, so embarrassed by what they did with uh, Bill Clinton. They don't want to go through that procedure politically. They better, they better impeach him now. Welcome back, and Harley, we talked about a couple of issues on the break. Um, if I was to use one word for the Obama administration, I'd say lawlessness and disrespect. Disrespect for the separation of powers, the Constitution, the rule of law, 
Uh, we have a the, in the making, and, and Lyndon called it years ago, a neuronic present, a neuro, a super, uh, if you want to call it narcissistic uh, psychopath, who basically cannot tell the truth unless it happens to be accidental, like when he said Trayvon Martin would be like his son. Uh, this is insanity, and uh, every policy that America has now supporting Al Qaeda to do regime change in Syria. But they're saying they're going to get rid of Al-Qaeda in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, where Americans are still dying. And the citizens there, and the civil war is just raging in Iraq. I think in the last week, it's another couple hundred people died. Uh, it's just lawlessness. There's, and the saying it permeates through every aspect, from the Department of Injustice, maybe they should call it from now on, let's just rename it. Why don't they just say, if the, instead of the Department of Justice, say, say just us. They're only the Department of just us. <laughs> Does that well, make you know, sense? On this question of lawlessness, this is a, a much lower level than the provocation of the Russians that we see. But even on a simple thing like the failure of the Health Care Act, in order to save it, what does Obama do? He issues another executive order through the Treasury Department giving so-called medium-sized firms, firms with 55 to 99 employees, an extra year before they have to go under the mandate that those of us who have to buy insurance as individuals are forced to go under. Now, I can just tell you, I mean, I know many people have horror stories about Obamacare, but I've been signed up for two months now. I have a bill which is an outrageous bill for a policy I never ordered. I'm being told by the insurance company that I cannot see a doctor until I pay the bill, and I said to them, but that's not my policy. And they say, well, you, according to healthcare.gov, you have three policies. And I said, well, I canceled two of them that were too expensive. When do I get to use the third one? And they said, well, probably it'll be straightened out by the end of the month. And I said, well, why do I have to pay for January? And they said, because it's in your contract. And I said, isn't it in your contract that I'm supposed to get health insurance? Now, what we're seeing, and I'm just using my personal case because I know there are many more worse cases. Right. If, I were, if I were suffering from a, a, a potentially fatal illness, well, I wouldn't be able to Renal failure. Covered. Let's say renal yeah. failure and you're on dialysis or you're getting uh, ongoing hospice care because you, you're basically a spinal uh, metastatic tumor and now you're paralyzed from the neck and you need to be in a striker bed and have round-the-clock nursing care at home or a, a, an extended care unit. And you I mean, get cut this... off. You get cut off. Now, mm, yeah. you know, when you and I talked three years ago, and I explained why LaRouche said this is the Hitler T4 policy, the Nazi euthanasia policy that's being brought in, not the simple idea of the death panel that Sarah Palin brought up, but an actual Nazi modeled policy to get rid of so-called useless eaters. And there are a lot of people around the country who said, oh, LaRouche is going too far, you can't bring in the Nazis. But now we see that is the policy. People are being cut off because of their age, their income or their state of their illness. Secondly, we see the administration supporting swastika-carrying Nazis in Maidan Square, sending our Deputy Secretary of State to give them support, John Kerry to give them support, Obama to give them support, because they're trying to use this to overthrow Putin. The goal of, of this British oligarchy, which uses Obama as a throwaway puppet, is to bring down Putin's regime because they cannot stand any opposition to the failing transatlantic banking system. They're doing everything they can to bring the Russians uh, down so they can take over Russia's raw materials. They want China's treasury bills. They want uh, cheap, even cheaper labor from China. But let me tell you one thing that they announced this week in, in Europe. The woman in charge of the single uh, resolution mechanism, that is the banking restructuring, said that while regulators of the individual countries may wish to protect depositors and investors, that goes against the European Union policy. And so she said, this is the chief regulator of European banking, she said, many banks will have to fail, but that's too bad. Now, which banks are going to fail? Not the ones that are bankrupt, the too big to fail banks, but the solvent banks that are being cut off from liquidity 
they're going to let them fail so they can seize their assets of their depositors. That's what she said. Well, now, this that's is what's been fascinating. happening. This is what's been happening, by the way, since this engineered uh, collapse has started. There were 18,000 banks in America in 2008, and now there's down less than 6,000. And the biggest banks are 37% bigger. So the fat ass banks, the fat banks, are now giant, and they're getting bigger, like, you know, Java the Hut banks. And the other banks have been starved to death. It really is disgusting. And of course, what it means is the small local banks are going to be cut off of liquidity. And of course, the third world banks, like the banks in Turkey, South Africa, uh, other countries, their interest rates now because of flight of capital because of Janet Gellin's new policies is taking flight, so they're trying to raise interest rates to protect their flight of capital from their countries. And uh, this is going to crash the world economy, and it's going to happen this year. And I think it's all by design. It's all by design to, to, to flood the, kind of the world with cheap zero interest money and then to pull it. Uh, at a specific time when they feel it's time to put the squeeze on China and Russia, because that's what's and, happening. And to leave, gonna... to, to leave just a handful of banks, all of which will be essentially dictating monetary policy to governments. And that dictation will include no money for health care, no money for retirement, uh, not just Social Security. They're going to steal all the pensions. You sitting out there with a 401k think you're safe, you have a Vanguard fund or some mutual fund, these are targeted for being stolen. You're and an unsecured creditor to the bank. You're an unsecured investor. And exactly. that money will be and bailed in, and basically people will be in panic. If you think the 1929 crash was bad, when we could, you know, more than 75% of the population live more than, no more than a few miles from a farm and could easily get back to some kind of subsistence living. Uh, I remember my grandmother mentioned to me how they had gardens and so on in their home in eastern Canada, and people would work literally for lunch or dinner. You know, but you know and, uh, what, you're, what you're seeing now is a, an accelerating death rate of younger officials of the criminal banks. A, uh, two J.P. Morgan traders have died in the last week under suspicious circumstances. These are people who headed divisions of J.P. Morgan Chase. One of them fell off the top of the J.P. Morgan Chase building in London. And now they're saying it's a highly suspicious suicide. I, I, uh, I got a new medical term for it. You know what it's called? Right. It's called mem it's, it's called memoncide. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what they're doing? Then a Deutsche Bank top guy who just retired uh, supposedly hanged himself, and he's someone who knows what Deutsche Bank was doing to flood flood the world with these phony mortgage backed securities. So you know what we're seeing is a combined effect of a financial breakdown. And Larouche was right in July two thousand seven when he said the banking system cannot escape a meltdown. And he was right before what happened in September 2008, and nothing has changed since then. Yeah, amazing. Uh, the, the bright news is that we are aware of what's going on. The bad news is it's something. still happening. The bad news yep. is it's still happening, and we're not doing enough. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, and uh, yeah, the experience here in uh, California is that the insurance plan, basically, uh, the doctors are off the list. Uh, they had to pull a list last week here in California because a lot of people are buying this covered California insurance, and they have these always have these commercials with people of, of color. And again, this is all ridiculous. Uh, what they needed to do, and I said this before, is go further than the so-called socialist countries like Canada and Europe. They need to have a federal and state tax or some other means of setting it up. It needs to be a right if you're either in America or visiting or you're the wife or husband of an American. You should just get, in, get taken care of because you've proven you have a right to be here. And you don't have to buy insurance. It goes for pre-existing conditions. Your doctor's paid a salary. Reasonable modifications to the, to the stipend on top of that based on years of experience, training, certification, re, uh, research, public service, and development of new techniques to reduce the cost of health care and to actually advance medicine so people stay well longer without toxic polypharmacy or unnecessary surgery. Well, and I can we tell you, in, in, in Europe, the, when I was there, I was treated, they treated me for free for a minor problem I had, but I can tell you, the doctors all have Mercedes Benz, so it's not as though they're hurting. No, 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 but no, 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 no,
uh, filling in forms and all the paperwork, which uh, takes two thirds of your time. The excessive malpractice, where in states like in Oregon, you can be sued for multiples of your entire uh, lifetime uh, earnings. When you have, when you get rid of the overarching activities of state medical boards, which will, you know, is, is they're the constant source of stress. It's not sick patients or dying patients. Doctors are used to dealing with sick patients and feel a positive when they help somebody who's near death or save somebody from extremis or do an emergency surgery or save somebody so they don't die of a traumatic accident. The stress comes from insurance companies that won't pay. The stress comes from being the payor stuck in what I call a piecemeal fee for service system, which by the way, in the socialist countries like Britain and Canada, it's no better. Your payer is still just the damn government instead of one or two or three or a dozen insurance carriers that won't pay a reasonable fee for your work. And as a result, you're trying to pay for staff, malpractice insurance, buildings, medical supplies, etc. And when you have Obamacare, it makes the doctors insolvent. It basically says, well, it costs you three bucks to make this burger, but you're going to sell it for two. And that means how many burgers are you before you're out of business? That's well, what I'm now, talking about. We, we, we could talk for hours on this dysfunctional killer policy of Obama, but I want to bring it back. The reason I brought it up is to make the point that this man is imposing a Nazi dictatorship on the United States. Right. And that's not a Tea Party exaggeration or a <clears throat> Fox News exaggeration or a paranoid conspiracy theorist. I can back it up by pointing out, as I did at the beginning of this program, that the rest of the world is looking at the United States as a lawless country that's driving toward a nuclear confrontation with Russia. And I, I want your list Listeners who are serious about getting rid of Obama to take a deep breath and realize that we haven't gotten rid of him yet because most of you have not done enough. If right. we had a kind of mobilization in this country that was even the size of what the Greeks are doing or the Italians are doing. If we started it, we wouldn't be like the Greeks and the Italians and quit when the sun goes down. We would mobilize as Americans until our country is rid of this foreign virus called Obama. Right. And by the way, and when we have Obama, he's actually bringing out the other pathogens, such as the Tea Party and this balance the budget foolishness where they don't want to extend unemployment benefits for people who are long-term unemployed because they structurally changed the economy. So it's not coming back. And manufacturing jobs are not coming back. What we have is a race to the bottom of devaluing currencies. And America is, is with now the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the trans the TTIP. They're actually going to export more it's jobs. It's going to be worse. Look, even right, Janet Yellen in her testimony yesterday, the new Federal Reserve chief, said that, well, official unemployment doesn't tell the real story. Now, here's the real story. 48% of Americans who are working age between 18 and 55, or, or 60, I think it is, only 48% have full-time jobs. Right. Now, some people say, that, you know, the hardcore conservatives say that's because people don't want to work. And the uh, Obama that's, supporters... You know, that, that's well, that's, a, you know, that's, that's fun, that's, but let me just tell you, what yeah. the Obama supporters say is, oh, that's because we have a changing economy, where if you want to take off time to spend time with your kids or take longer vacations or work less, you can. Well, maybe if you're a millionaire, you can do that. But most yeah. Americans with temporary, part-time, and low-wage jobs don't have that luxury. And they're barely surviving out there. And I know many of your listeners, and I, I know this because I've gotten calls from a lot of your listeners, and right. we've talked about politics, they agree, and then I ask them to make a small contribution, and they say, well, I have no money. Now, I'm taking them at their word. I'm assuming most of your listeners aren't lying to me and then running off to Las Vegas and spending all their money. Some of them do, but not all of them. But even Here's if it's only $10, uh, the, the thing is, we don't do something now before the end of Obama's term. This country won't even exist. This will be a, a place on the map for the globalists to say, this is one of our territories we crushed. Well, what, what I want to make as a point is that we don't even have till 2016. No. Because what the Russians are doing is they're looking at the pace of Obama's moves to cut off Russia. You know, for example, why are the Russians so worried about Ukraine? There, there are three reasons. One is history. Ukraine was used by the Nazis as a launching ground to cut Russia off from the Black Sea, from the oil, and to carry out a policy of extermination. So history is one reason. Uh, secondly, 
the the Black Sea ports would be taken away if Ukraine is taken over by a Anglo-American uh, opposition group, and that's necessary for Russia's security because that's the opening to the Mediterranean for them, right. uh, and the Black Sea is an important area for them for oil development and also for trade with Middle Eastern partners. And the third reason is that Ukraine would be integrated into NATO, which means that missiles, offensive weapons, and anti-missile defense systems would be installed right on the border of Russia. Now, given the, that Kennedy correctly identified the Cuban Missile Crisis as an existential threat to the United States and took us to the brink of war to force the Russians to back down, the Russians are now talking about Ukraine using these words, Cuban Missile Crisis. So is their that, Cuban crisis, in other words, we're doing now under Obama what uh, Khrushchev did during the missile crisis in Cuba. Exactly. And that's why this, this I encourage your listeners to go to your website or to my website, LaRouchePak.com, and look at these statements by Ivashov. There was a statement by the chief negotiator of Russia at the arms control talks who said it's fruitless to talk because the West is not listening. And this is over the question of whether these anti-ballistic missile systems are going to be uh, installed on the border of Russia. And supposedly, they're being put there because of the danger of Iran's nuclear missiles. Now, given that probably the only thing that I think Obama has done that's defensible, and I think he did this under enormous pressure, was to go ahead with negotiations with Iran, why are we worried about Iranian nuclear missiles? It's not about Iran. It's always been about Russia. The Russians said, if you're worried about Iranian missiles, let's put missile bases in southern Russia, the anti-missile bases in southern Russia that can catch them at launch phase, and do that together. So what you have is an open commitment from this administration to stick a finger in the Russians' eyes, a foot up their rear end, and threaten their very existence, all in the name of democracy and human rights, just as we overthrew Gaddafi in the name of democracy and human rights, and we ended up with an al-Qaeda-linked government there, just as we're trying to do to Syria. Now we're doing it in Ukraine, and the Russians are saying, look, Libya was bad enough. We Actually, the Russians agreed with us on Libya, and then they realized we double-crossed them. They won't give in on Syria. They cannot give in on Ukraine. Right. And Iran. So what we see basically is the final chess pieces are being laid out. World War III, if it's not stopped and Obama removed, is on the menu. So it's for communists, but really he's a transnational corporate Welcome back and... Uh, we, we have our walking uh, papers now. I know a lot of people out there think, well, I can't contribute anything. Well, you can contribute 5 or $10. You can contribute by uh, contacting your congressman and senator, like when this vote came out, that they, they supported literally Nazis in Ukraine against the validly elected Ukrainian government that was monitored by the United Nations to make sure the election was fair and reasonable. When we have people like Putin are, are a reasonable man, he he wants business. He wants to strategically expand the range of businesses available in Russia. He wants more Russian babies. He's even declared a day for Conception Day. He's trying to get children and young people off of cocaine and heroin and all these toxic drugs because one of the highest concentrations of drug abuse percentage-wise in the world is in the cities of Moscow and uh, other major Russian cities. Because it's being pumped in from Afghan heroin that's produced right. in the British-controlled areas of Afghanistan. And by the way, those Afghan uh, uh, warlords are still existing and still pumping the dope, no different than the, what I call the opium wars, because this is a way of degrading the Russian population, and they actually pay off the warlords so they won't shoot our American troops to make sure the, the pipelines for drugs are still there, because it's legal to launder the money in American banks. 
So they're laundering the money they make to sell to the Russian youth to destroy them. And now even terrorist drugs I call like crocodile that makes them get gas grain green. This came out of Russia. These, these drugs, this, this heroin and so on, is all there to multipurpose to create black op project, infinite budgets, to destroy and degrade the young population of Russia. And Putin gets it. He's a Russian that doesn't drink vodka. He is a nationalist. He understands that you have to have a table of strong nations, not a globalist government to control the world that needs well, to be me, elected. Let me just take a couple minutes before the end of the program just to reorient the discussion we've had so that it becomes clear to listeners that if they've never acted before, now is the time to act. We have a oh, situation yeah. where the United States is supporting, under Obama, not the American people, not even the U.S. military, but Obama is causing us to support terrorists in the Middle East, al-Qaeda-linked terrorists, and to support Nazis in Ukraine. The Russians see this. The Chinese see this. They understand it. They are making preparations to defend themselves. The Russian defense minister just went to Kamchatka Peninsula to basically bless the Russian submarine fleet with their second strike nuclear capabilities. The, the Russians are preparing for war. General Ivashov, a highly decorated Russian general who now heads a think tank, said, I hope our foreign ministry realizes that we are at war. That's how the Russians are viewing this. And as Obama every day tightens the noose, the, the encirclement of Russia, the Russians are making a decision. Now, what are they going to do? I mean, their options are limited. They could move troops into Ukraine the way they did in Chechnya or Georgia. It's unlikely they'll do that. The most likely response will be they're on a countdown to see if Obama continues this push, they may launch a preemptive strike because they know the United States under Obama has a plan for a preemptive strike. So we're right. a blink away from possible nuclear showdown. Oh. I'll, now, I'll expand that list a little bit. The first, the, I know that the Russians are remiss to do what they did in the Cuban Missile Crisis. But if push comes to shove, they'll may, stage major intermediate rockets uh, in Venezuela and other favorable countries in South America to strike America from the south. They just need to bring one of their large nuclear submarines on either coast and all our major cities are turned into atomic ash. And the fact is the Russians don't want to do that. They know that war is not survivable. The thing about weapons of mass destruction is it's best to shine them, not use them. Whether they're biological, chemical, or fuel air bombs or scalar weapons, you shine them, you polish them, you do not use them. That's so the, the American military that. knows that. The American military is talking to the Russian military daily to try and avoid war by miscalculation. See, but, but the cause of the miscalculation is the President of the United States. Yeah. And just to, to conclude my summary, uh, anyone listening to this program who wants to be sure that we're going to be around in a year should yeah. act now to call your congressman the same way you did to stop the war in Syria. But this time, we're not just calling to stop a war, we're trying to get the war maker out. And you've right. got to call and tell your congressman, don't show your face in this district if you're going to keep supporting Obama. Right. And here's the other part of that thing. What's happening right now is there is still an attempt to start the war in Syria. The dissection away of Iran so that they can't participate in Syrian negotiations in Geneva right now. The idea that we're going to, that Syria is excluded from even negotiating over whether they're going to have uh, some kind of a, a, a program to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. The fact is, a nuclear Iran doesn't make one iota difference because if Iran's attacked, Pakistan's already promised, even though they're a different branch of Islam, to protect Iran. Russia has said to King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, if Iran is attacked, which is Saudi Arabia's plan, along with Israel, Russia's going to respond. They're going to turn those nations of Israel and Saudi Arabia into obsidian glass. And uh, by the way, if that happens, you only have to wait 20 to 30 minutes and every American city on the east and west coast will be a nuclear holocaust. You'll see a big flash, look up and see your fingers for the last time in the bones, and the next time you're going to be, blink your eyes, you're going to say, hello, Jesus. That's it. It's over. And most people don't realize that could happen any day now 
because of the insanity of Obama, because they're pushing the Russians. And there's two people on Earth that I'm going to repeat you do not push, Syrians and Russians. And if you look at their history, if you go back thousands of years, the most dangerous people on Earth to push are Syrians and Russians. Well, and, and also, Dr. Gonna... Deagle, when the American people get angry, <clears throat> they can be a good force for righteousness. But right yeah. now, Americans they need to be angry are right now. If they aren't angry, they're going to get dead soon because That's Obama right. doesn't give a damn whether he starts a nuclear war or even forces the Russians to deploy nuclear weapons. By the way, the Chinese already have them at the Guatemala-Mexican border and in Venezuela. The Chinese have a multi-track policy, and they want to do business. They really don't want to do war, but to be honest with you, the Japanese are armed to the teeth, and people need to understand this. I know a lot of people think that China can take on Japan. Uh-uh. They're delusional. Uh, maybe eight or well, ten years from now. But right now, if today a war broke out, Japan will nuke them so flat, so quickly, and destroy them so fast, because there's not only nuclear weapons in Taiwan and South Korea and Japan, which is armed to the teeth. They're the third nuclear power, not Israel. And if a war breaks out with Japan and Mr. Abe, you know, the Um Shunrikyo cult member, China will disappear. It'll, well, one one quarter right. of humanity will disappear, like, almost instantly. Let, let's just get back focused on the American people, because I really think that what, what you're laying out, what we've been discussing today, should be compelling. So the question is, will you take action? Will you, the listeners of Dr. Deagle's show, most of whom agree with everything we're saying about Obama, will you get rid of your cynicism and pessimism, which Obama was partly put in power right, to right. make you more pessimistic? Will right, you we'll get over that and join us to get him out? And I, I, I want to give our number here. Because, because of attitude is optimism. Now, the number again is... That's right. Yeah, it's 800-922-2907. If you're serious and you want to do something, call me up after this program, 800-922-2907. Don't give in to your sense that nothing will happen, you can't win. Obama could be out quickly, very quickly. Yeah. If people get off their rear ends and show the spunk and determination and optimism of real Americans. So one more time, it's 800-922-2907. And by the way, if this happens now, before the 2014, the kind of congressmen and senators elected will be ones that can carry it forward to a president, whether it's a Republican or Democrat, that will put people in America first, and a foreign policy that makes us not the enemy of, of every nation on earth. Right now, we don't have any friends. We basically have what's called potential enemies or real enemies. We have alienated everybody, including even our so-called allies in Europe with you know, NSA spying and everything else. Uh, it, it really is dangerous what we're doing, and people don't understand that they the uh, you know the globalists don't care a rat's behind for what happens to America if all our cities get nuked or all our young men die in war they don't care they could care less and Dr. Deagle what's what's your website where people can get those links uh, they can get the links at Nutramedical N-U-T-R-I medical.com we're also going to post a lot of new articles over at clay and iron.com that's N-U-T-R-I medical.com the links are up there directly for the audio video clips etc today and uh, that number again, 800-922-2907. Thank you, Harley. An amazing call to action. Talk to you next week. And if people don't take action, don't be surprised if really horrible things happen this year because all the chambers are loaded for economic, ecological, catastrophic, environmental, uh, and war. This is echoes of 1914, what we're hearing today. Back in a moment, hour number two coming up, hour number three, Dr. Ted Brower back for an encore from yesterday's third hour program. <laughs> 